Well, we're here with the uh, senator from Wyoming, Senator John Barrasso. And, Senator, thank you so much for your time today. Well, it's great to be here. You know, so many conservatives here and so many NRA members. I'm a life member of the NRA. got my first uh, NRA, actually, medal when I was in, you know, a teenager. And uh, thank God my mom saved it. So <laughs> I still have that, have the targets. And uh, uh, you, you know, as I do, and the people of Wyoming know how just very important our Second Amendment rights are. And... Uh, I have great concerns with this administration, have had from the beginning, which is why I opposed the uh, uh, confirmation of the Attorney General uh, because of his, his positions. Uh, you and I know the Second Amendment has to do with our rights as individuals, not a well-regulated militia. But our rights, our individual rights, and that's the way the people of Wyoming believe, and that's my belief as well. Yeah, the state of Wyoming, the state legislature has been uh, busy with several pieces of pro-gun legislation uh, so far this session, and uh, hopefully all of those will uh, pass and become law. Uh, you know, meantime in Congress, I, I think everybody's kind of waiting. We've heard uh, talk that uh, perhaps uh, President Obama will address the issue of gun control at some point in the future. Uh, and I don't know if you uh, had a chance to hear Wayne LaPierre's speech at CPAC yesterday, but uh, he called on Congress to pass a nationwide right to carry reciprocity, uh, very similar to the Thune Amendment uh, that was uh, got 58 votes in the Senate when it came up a couple of years ago. You know, I, I co-sponsored that amendment with uh, John Thune. Um, I'm licensed to carry. Uh, have my concealed carry permit with me right now. The uh, And that's, you know, so many people in Wyoming do. Uh, I agree with the reciprocity completely. I actually was on CNN during that debate and uh, debating uh, the current mayor of uh, New York City, uh, Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> uh, and he had the opposite position because I think just like a driver's license, you have a Wyoming driver's license, you're, you're able to drive in New York. If you have a Wyoming concealed carry permit, that should apply in New York and all the other states as well that have concealed carry laws. So I support what Wayne is trying to accomplish. I supported John Thune, gave speeches on the floor to that effect, and I'm going to continue to fight for it. With this uh, uh, current makeup of Congress, uh, you've got you know the Democrats in control of the Senate, Republicans in control of the House, and then obviously President Obama. It seems like it would be very difficult to uh, to shepherd through pro-gun legislation, but. Uh, in the past couple of years, we've actually seen some pro-gun amendments uh, get attached to bills and actually become law. So it seems like it is possible to, uh, to, to, to advance the cause of the Second Amendment, even with a, a split Congress. Well, and, you know, thanks to the, the NRA and all your hard work during the last election, uh, Nancy Pelosi truly did get fired. And we now have a Republican Congress. Uh, the cavalry arrived in the Senate with, uh, you know, 13 new Republicans, but six added members. So we now have 47. We still have uh, Barack Obama in the White House. So it would be a challenge to get him to sign some of the laws that I think would be an improvement on uh, the things that he has supported. But we're not stopping. And if, if President Obama decides, we've, you know, we've seen some talk that perhaps he's going to try to wield the, uh, the power of the executive uh, to, to sort of bypass Congress as much as possible, not just in the Second Amendment realm, but in other areas as well, using the regulatory power of the EPA, the regulatory power of the ATF, for instance. What can Congress do uh, if the president decides to, you know, try to uh, step over the line, so to speak, uh, uh, using the regulatory process? Well, you know, the president came out with his executive order a couple of weeks ago and said he's going to get rid of unnecessary rules and regulations. This has been the most regulating president and, and administration of all, of all times. They have a, what, a quarter of a million people writing regulations, a big bump up, even, even more employees and more regulations being written than when Bill Clinton was president. Now, there is something called the Congressional Review Act, and uh, we are going to use that as new regulations come out to uh, try to go against some of these, uh, really, to me, overreaches by this administration. And, you know, I've recently introduced a piece of legislation to help protect American energy and American jobs, uh, and says to the Environmental Protection Agency, you know, quit trying to use the Endangered Species Act, the Environmental, uh, uh, the, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, uh, uh, the NEPA, the National uh, Environmental Policy Act, f under the idea of, of climate change. You know, Congress has rejected cap and tax. But you're absolutely right. They are going to try to do some things regulation-wise. Anytime a new regulation comes out, we're going to go after them with the Congressional Review Act. In fact, even in Wyoming, I guess, they've been using the uh, the power of uh, regulation and, and uh, the anti-hunting activists have been using the power of litigation to try to block uh, Wyoming's implementation of a, uh, a policy to deal with the, the growing wolf population in your state. Well, you know, they use the Endangered Species Act uh, and, and they say, well, because of climate change, you can't do something. And, you know, the wolf under, ought to be under the control of Wyoming, not Washington. Uh, you know, 
any hunter, any NRA member could have told folks that when they introduced the wolf back into Yellowstone about 15 years ago, that those 30 breeding pairs would continue to breed and the wolves wouldn't realize that there was actually a boundary to Yellowstone. So the wolf has been devastating to our, our, our livestock, for our ranchers, but also to the wildlife, uh, for our hunters. So everyone has feel, felt the impact of the wolf and Washington still doesn't get it. So the, the fights continue, you know, the Secretary of Interior just came out with his Wild Lands Initiative. Uh, they tried to sneak that out December 23rd after Congress adjourned and, you know, kind of under the the cloak of the darkness, which is what they try to do with a lot of these regulations. We've had great success in Wyoming with multiple use of the land for uh, for, for for recreation, for hunting, for uh, uh, you know, you name it, uh, grazing, for uh, oil and gas and energy exploration, uh, and and we do it in a very responsible way. Uh, we're good stewards of the land, and NRA, the uh, NRA members always have been, and will continue to be that way. So we have to fight an administration, just just to be able to live within the rights that we know we have. Yeah. Senator, if I could ask you one non-Second Amendment related question, because I know we have a lot of uh, listeners uh, and obviously a lot of NRA members are very concerned about the economy, the growing deficits. Uh, how confident are you that, uh, that, that Washington can get the, uh, the budget deficits and the, uh, the debt under control? Yeah, no, we have to do that. And we have people uh, now elected who realize the importance of that. This is an administration that over the last two years have added $3 trillion to our national debt and at the same time lost 3 million jobs. Uh, the president pays some lip service to jobs, but the American people are focused on jobs, the economy, the debt, and the spending. The president spent over a year uh, cramming a health care law down the throats of the American people, and it's almost been a year since it's been signed into law. Still a majority of Americans don't like it and want it repealed. Uh, but this is an administration that hasn't been focused where it should be. And if government spending were to solve the problem of the economy, we'd have a booming economy because this president has wasted a trillion dollars of taxpayer money, promised if they passed the so-called stimulus package that unemployment would stay below 8 percent. They passed it and it went to 10 percent. And the unemployment rate is still 9 percent. That's what the American people are focused on. And the bottom line is, it's the spending. Our problem isn't that we're taxed too little. Our problem is that we spend too much. Uh, and I think people finally get it. You know, this year this government spent $3.7 trillion and only took in $2.2 trillion. 41 cents of every penny of, of every dollar we spend is borrowed money, a lot of it from the Chinese. So those are the battles that we're going to continue to fight. And with the help of our NRA members all across the country, uh, it's going to make it easier for us. Senator, thank you so much for your time. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.